Hello everybody here, what's Gucci? And today it's I guess the Apple Juice Scholars and I want to talk about the bubble sort. The bubble sort is mostly not used today, but in case you're wondering, I wanted to make a video about it and somebody requested I make one, so I should, but I will say this in the beginning and the end that there are better search algorithms to use than the bubble sort. But anyway, the bubble sort works by comparing adjacent elements and then swapping them if need be depending on the order and then moving on until it gets to the end of the array or collection then after swapping each adjacent element that would mean that the biggest element would would be swapped to the last position so we know the last position is correct and then we would keep on doing it for the second iteration, get the second biggest element all the way till we got to the lowest element, or the smallest element. And in this way, the elements sort of bubble up, and that is why it is called a bubble sort. But I'm here to show you guys an example here. I have a collection of boxes of numbers, as you see, which are going to act as an array, with this being position zero and this being the last position and I'm going to show you how bubble sort works and as you can see it's unordered here first I'm going to start at the 77 and the 1 and I'm going to compare both of these and I'm going to say is 77 less than 1 and of course it is not so I'm going to swap them just at the just with their positions so now you can see 1 and 77 are swapped. Now 1 is in the right position, but we don't know that. Now I'm going to look at 77 and 22. So the next element and this, the next element, we have one new element and the second element that we compared, 77 and 22, and it's 77 less than 22. No, it's not. So I'm going to swap these again. <laughs> And now I'm going to do the same thing with 77 and 17. And 77 is not less than 17. So again, I'm going to swap those two. Now I'm going to compare 77 and 66. 77 is, again, greater than 66. So I'm going to swap those at their positions. Now I'm going to compare 33, 34, sorry. And 77, and again, 77 is still greater, so you can see how I'm bubbling 77 up here. And now I'm coming to a little change. I compare 77 to 99. 99 is greater than 77, so I am not going to swap those, and I'm going to just continue and see that compare 99 to 2, and I see that 99 is greater than 2, so I'm going to swap 99 and 2. And thus, that leaves me with 99 at the top of the array or collection. And now I see, and I see that 99 is, in fact, sorted correctly. And now I'm going to start the recursively do the algorithm again, except I'm going to, this time I will stop before I hit the 99 because I don't need to sort that anymore. So I'm going to compare 1 to 22. 1 is less than 22, so I don't need to do anything there. I compare 22 to 17, and yes, those need to be swapped because 17 is less than 22. I, can, I compare 22 to 66, and I see that 22 is less than 66, so I don't swap them. Then I compare 66 to 34, and I do swap them. Oops. And again, Hopefully you can see the pattern going on here. And then I look at 66 and 77, and they are in order, so I don't do anything. Then I look at 77 and 2, and I see that 2 is indeed less than 77, so I swap those, and now 77 is the right place. So I start the algorithm again. Is 1, I look at 1, I look at 77, and I see that 1 is less than 77, so that's okay. Then again, I look at 17 and 22, and I see that those are in line. 
Then I look at 22 and 34, and those are okay as well. Then I look at 34 and 66, those are okay. And I look at 66 and 2, and those are not okay. So I'm going to swap those because 2 is less than 66, so those need to be swapped. Now, those three are in order, so now again, I run the algorithm again. 1 and 17 are in order, 17 and 22 are in order, 22 and 34 are in order, 34 and 2 are not in order, so I'm going to swap these. And then again, 34 is in the right position, so I run the algorithm again. 1 and 17 are in order, 22 and 17 are in order, but 22 and 2 are not in order, so I swap these again. As you can see, this gets kind of tedious, because all we need to do is bring the 2 down. Again, I run the algorithm again, 1 and 17. Those do not need to be swapped. 17 and 2 do need to be swapped. So again, the 17 gets swapped with 2 because 17 is greater than 2. And then I know all these are in order, so then I run the algorithm one last time. Is 1 less than 2? Yes, it is, so I don't swap that. And my algorithm is completely sorted with 1, 2, 17, 22, 34, 66. 77 and 99. Now for all the big boys, we're going to be talking about the big O. And the big O is, again, the average, the worst case scenario. And it is n squared in this case because, as you can see, you may have to do n minus 1 swaps for the first iteration, and then n minus 2, and then n minus 3, and then all the way to 1 iteration. So, so it would be n minus 1 plus n minus 2. And you could see how that could get very hairy. And that essentially equates to n squared. So it's not that efficient in a very big array because n squared would quickly take a lot of time. The best case is O of n if it is already sorted. But I don't think that is a very likely case because, well, you can't count on that. In computer science, you're really worried about the worst case scenario. What happens if everything goes goes wrong? Because if you have an algorithm that can fix if everything goes wrong, then you don't have to worry when most things are right. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video. I'll see you later.